Hello everybody, in today's video we're going to be talking about how to set up the paint layers and the displacement for the auto material. If you don't know how to create this auto material, I have full video long three hours how to create it. Just click over here, go watch it and after that you can use this video in order for you to add paint layers and displacement to it. As you can see over here, I have set up some paint layers and I have some displacement happening. If I go with my camera like that and right now I'm going to show you how you can set up the displacement and the paint layers. All right. The first thing about the displacement is you need to right click and click show in Explorer. Then what you need to do is you need to go to your config and click on the default engine.ini. And in this file, you need those two lines air.nanite.allowtessellation equals to one and air.nanite.tessellation equal to one. Add them under render settings, save them and then reset Unreal Engine. This is how you can open up and have the displacement enabled. After that you can enable displacement for, na for nanite meshes, go to edit to plugins and after you search for displacement you need to enable nanite displaced meshes. What this will give you, it will give you the option to use displacement on landscapes if you enable nanite on your landscape. So enable it and again restart your Unreal Engine. Now let's deep dive how you can add paint layers and displacement to the auto material. If you enjoyed any of the videos on this channel and if you are a fan could you do me a quick favor and hit that subscribe button? Surprisingly, 85% of the people who watched my videos are unsubscribed. Your quick action of hitting that subscribe button will support this channel and as it grows, we will be able to share even more free content with you. Right now, this is my auto material. It also has an RVT enabled and has some footsteps based on uh, character movement. But right now we're going to talk about the paint layers and the displacement. First, I'm going to show you how you can add the paint layers and it is super easy. So what you need to do is you need to go to your MF default layer, double click on it. And in this layer from our, our previous video, you have the output basic color as a final note over here after the switch. And what you need to do in order for you to add another layer, just right click and search for output and select function output. Then connect the output base color to the function output like this one and name it color paint and put the sort priority of zero. After that, what you need to do is we have here from the previous video output normal near and output normal far. This is the normal map based near and far distance of our character. And after it, what you need to do in order to have the paint layer is you need to use the combine normal simple. So right click MF underscore combine normal simple, then connect the normal near to the A and the normal far to the B because we are right now combining those two. And then the combined option would you need again output function output and name the function output normal combined paint and set the priority of one. This is for the normal combine and for the color paint. All right. Next is the displacement. For the displacement here, you need a texture object with the sample type color. I have just created this placeholder which says displacement. This is just white texture with text. You can create it in paint. You can create it in Photoshop or whatever use a white texture with a text. This is for a placeholder. So texture object, search for texture object, add a texture object, then add the texture that you've created like a placeholder and it should be sample type color. The next thing is we need to add a function input. So right click function input, select this one and you got to give it a name texture displacement. And here for the function input, you need function input texture. Open the drop down and select function input texture 2D. After that, you set up the sort priority of 12 and use the preview values and connect your texture object over here. Then what we need to have is we need to have two texture samples because we want to blend from the near and from the far distance. So in order to create this right click texture sample and this texture sample should have shared wrap as sample source. So go over here choose shared wrap and it also should be a type of color. All right. So I'm just going to delete this one, then connect the output of the texture 2D to the texture slot over here and over here again to the texture slot because we are feeding 
this placeholder texture and later on when you download the displacement from Quixel, you're gonna feed the texture over here to this texture sample and to this one. The next step is to get the UV coordinates right. For the first UV textures, you need to connect it from the add source over here that has the UV near, all right? So from this add, go all the way down and connect it to the UVs. The next one is from the far. We are getting from the switch over here and we're getting from the switch from the far multiplier, all right? So from the switch over here from the far, you just need to connect it to the UVs to the second one because this is working for the far. And for the first one, we are getting from the add section over here, not from the switch, from the add, and we are getting it from the UV near, right? And after that, we just multiply those two and set the output again, function output, set it as displacement paint and set the priority of two. Keep in mind that when you set the priority, you need to change the priority for those also. This one, the base cover is priority three, the normal near is priority four and the normal far is priority five. This is in order for us to set up the cover paint first, the normal combined paint second, the displacement paint third, and base cover, normal near and normal far after that. So after you've done all this magic over here, setting up the displacement and setting up the output cover paint and the output combined paint with the MF combined normal simple, you just have here new connections, okay? And those things are just reroutes. So if I drag here, reroute, add named reroute the correlation node, and you just type for the first one, this will be my rock, cover, paint, reroute, all right? This is how I've created this. Those are just reroutes. And I've created reroutes for each of the layers over here. So those are my rock, cover, paint, R stands for reroute, rock normal combined paint, rock displacement paint, and I've created those reroutes over here. The next thing that you're gonna have is on the MF default layer, you have the texture displacement, and you need to add here a parameter texture object with the uh, placeholder texture of displacement, sample type cover, and the group will be rock, and the sort priority will use the default 32. Parameter name is texture rock displacement. And if you are wondering how to create this, right click texture object parameter, this one, you need to make this one and just change the settings over here. The group should be rock, cover and use your placeholder. So far, so good. We've created our uh, paint layers. We've connected our displacement and you need to do this for all your layers. So I did it for my stones over here. Add it again, the texture stone displacement. Don't forget to change the names over here. Then I've added reroutes over here for my grass layer, for my dirt layer, for my snow layer. And if you have more layers, do this for all of your layers. After that, let's go to the paint section. So let's go to the decoration. If you enjoy the content and wish to support the channel, or if you're interested in accessing the files for this project and everything that I've created so far, including the landscape auto material, the water shader, the fog material, the Blueprint Mega Kit, the Interactive Water System, the Interactive Foliage System, the PCG Path, the PCG Ditch, the PCG Forest Pro, and every other tool and shader I've developed and will continue to create in the future, visit my Patreon page at patreon.com slash cgdealers. By selecting a tier, you can acquire the assets you want while supporting the channel and the ongoing development of new tools and enhancement of the current tools. For those who simply want to support the channel, I've introduced a YouTube membership option. By joining, you will get access to our private Discord lobby where I'm most active, providing priority support. Please note, this membership doesn't include access to download tools, shaders, system, blueprints, or any other content like in Patreon. Enroll in this membership if you don't want to pay for Patreon, but want to donate a Coca-Cola or a coffee. This support helps me stay fueled and continue creating videos for free for you guys. Thank you so much. Now let's deep dive into the video. And here I have a section for the paint layers, which is pretty easy. Right here we have the reroutes. So if I search for rock cover paint, this is the reroute that I'm using over here in the rock. And this is just for cleanup and good looking shader notes and connections. That is why I'm using reroutes. So this reroute 
we'll go to set material attributes. So right click set material attributes and here you need to add three attributes. The first one should be the base color. The second one should be the normal. Let's see the normal, not the bent normal. And the third one should be the displacement. This is how I set it up. And then I just toggle the bubble and said this is my rock paint layer. All right. This is how I set it up. And all the reroutes are connected to my input nodes over here. And I do another reroute which says paint rock layers dot R. I did this for all the layers. I set up the material attributes. All right. And after I did this, let me go to the declaration and this is the final output. What I did here is I used the landscape layer blend. So search for landscape layer blend and this will blend the layers that we've added. And again from here we need to add different layers from the add element and let me show you what it did add. So let me just expand it. The first layer we, is the auto material. So if we didn't paint anything on our landscape, we can use the auto material. Should be layer blend, weight blend. The second one is rock. Third one is stones. Then we have the grass. We have the dirt. We have the snow. And we have the remove foliage layer, All right? So connect here the remove foliage layer uh, from the reroute. Then from those reroutes that we've created for the painted layers, connect each one to the layer blend over here. If you also want to add RVT to this master material, go and watch my video on how to set up and add RVT for the landscape auto material. Click here to go to the video. But from my previous video, you have this landscape material final output. You just need to connect it over here to the layer auto material, just your landscape material file. And then after we did this layer blend, we get the material attributes. So we grab all the layers, all the attributes over here that are blending. So search for get material attributes, connect it over here and just add all the attributes that you are outputting. In this case, we are outputting the base color, again, the normal and the displacement. So we want those three to be outputted. All right. Then what I did is set material attributes, set material attributes. So we are setting it for the final and the material attributes that we are setting is base color, normal map displacement. And for the default, we use the material attribute from our landscape material final right from here. And this is for the paint layers. All right. This is how the paint layers will work. And after that, of course, we are getting it to the result node of the material. And let's finish up the displacement. So right now we have the displacement here in the default layer, but we are not uh, having it in the layer blend. Let's open the layer blend and let me show you how you can add the displacement per each layer. So here in the displacement mask for each layer, right now we have uh, here the stone, the stone base, the rock base, the grass base. You need to create additional vector three parameters over here, as I've created for each layer that you have to add the displacement. So the first one is the rock base displacement, which has the sort priority of 22, 23, 24, and 25. Those are uh, the last priorities. How I connect them? So I use a lerp node to lerp between the rock and the stones. And the same, I use lerp to lerp between those two and the grass base displacement. And I use another lerp node to use with those three and lerp it between the dirt base displacement. Okay. Then I do an output displacement. We are getting the displacement as an output, like I showed you output function output and name it displacement with the sort priority of zero. Okay. The important thing is where do you get the alpha from? The first alpha for this lerp, we are getting from the stones mask. Okay. We're getting here from the stones mask. The second one uh, for the alpha of this lerp, we are getting it from the grass base cover. And the third alpha mask, we are getting it from the dirt mask. Okay. This is because from here we are blending between the base color of the rock and the base color of the stones and we are using the stone mask in the alpha. We do the same over here 
blending the rock based color displacement, stone based color displacement and putting the alpha. So for the color and for the displacement we are using the same mask. That is why we connect it like that. Same is from here from the grass based color. We are using the input grass mask and here I have a little mistake because I am using the base color over here. What you need to do is use the mask, not the base color, right? So this was a mistake that I did. So from the alpha mask, we are blending the grass, we are blending the grass, alpha mask here, alpha mask here. And again, for my dirt base layer, we are using the dirt mask. Now just save it. And we have our layer paint and our displacement. Let's go and test it out. Now, once we've done this, you can go to the landscape over here. You can go to paint and here you will have paint layers. What you need to do is you need to click create layer info and add a blend info. Okay. And after that, let's start having some fun. If I select the rock over here, I can start painting some rocks. If I go all the way down, you can see that we have some tessellation or displacement. If you want to boost this up, you can open your master material. Scroll all the way down and in the displacement you can set the magnitude. So if I set the magnitude to be a little higher, let's say, let me show you over here pretty quickly. Let's say a magnitude of 2 and then hit save. See how we added the magnitude over here and we are just bumping up those rocks. So from the magnitude you can control the displacement, how hard it will be. Right now it's very jiggy on my end. So I found out that for those textures that I'm using and the material 0.5 or 0.6 is the best, the best looking. Okay. So once you have the paint layers, you can start painting over here and you can paint whatever layers you want on top of another. Like we added some foliages, we want to make a little dirt path over here and we for example, want to add a little snow line, let's say. And let's test this out. And here, as you can see, we have the displacement working. We have all the painted layers working. We have the procedures working. And this is how you can add painted layers and displacement to your landscape auto material. If you didn't watch the video, go and watch the original video on how to create this material. Thank you guys for watching this video. See ya. In the next one. And before I end up this video, I want to let you know that I've created a Blueprints Masterclass for Unreal Engine 5. It is available right now on Udemy. So if you want to expand your knowledge and not just only create art pieces in Unreal Engine 5, but create some characters, create some game logic, my course is the perfect solution from beginners to intermediate Unreal Engine 5 users. The course itself is 15 hours long and it has all the foundation that you need to kickstart your blueprint knowledge in Unreal Engine 5. So if you want to keep evolving yourself beyond just creating art in Unreal Engine 5, enroll now.